In this video, we're going to be making a wine glass using box modeling techniques. For box modeling, we're going to start off with a box and then we're going to use this tool, which is extrude, and this tool here, which is multi-cut, to allow us to modify our cube and turn it into the shape we want. So let's start by um, zooming in a little bit on our shape and we're going to need to go in and select a different mode. Because we're actually modifying the vertices that make up this object, we don't want to be in object mode. We want to be in either edge mode, vertex mode or face mode. You can access these different modes just by clicking your right mouse button and then selecting one of these different options. So let's start off with face mode. When you're in face mode, you see you can select the different faces that make up the object. May I cause these components. What I want to do with my box here is I want to take the whole lot of the box, so I'm going to select everything, click and drag, and then I'm going to scale it. So I'm going to go to my scale tool over here, or press my R key on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click on this little guy down here to scale my box in on two dimensions at once. Now I want to scale it in like this because I'm making the stem of a wine glass. And then I'm going to scale it up like that. Now you might look at that stem and think, yeah, but a wine glass doesn't have a square stem on it. And that's true, but a wine glass does have a circular stem on it. And you'll see that if we go into smooth mode, what this has done is it's created this weird sort of elliptical thing that is nonetheless quite circular. So smooth mode uses a method called Catmull clark subdivision, which will actually um, cut down your object into a series of smooth curved surfaces. And it was a technique that was first used in Toy Story um, to create the um, characters in that particular movie. And it's since become a really useful tool in most 3D applications. Okay, so apart from that little bit of history there, let's um, continue. So go back in to um, your face select mode and we're going to select this top face. Now what we want to be able to do here is we want to make this top face kind of be able to come out and go into a, a shape of the top of a wine glass. So to do that what we're going to do is use our extrude tool here. We're going to click on that and then we're going to just bring this face out like this. And we're not going to bring it out too far, just a little bit. You might be tempted to go straight into making the top of the wine glass but we actually need a little bit of a neck in here so that we've got something to work with. Okay, so we're going to create that little face there like that. And then what we're going to do is select that face and using our scale tool, we're going to use the green box here to scale it out like this. We can make it quite big. All right, so that's what our, what's what our thing looks like now. You can start to see it kind of starting to form. So the next thing we want to do is we want to extrude this top face here. So we'll select that top face and we're going to use the extrude tool again. Now, before I use the extrude tool this time, I'm just going to quickly give you a hint. Um, we can actually use control E to do extrude as well. So you press control E and then we can do the extrude. And that just saves you from having to come up here and click on the extrude tool. So there's my, um, there's my object that's extruded. And you'll notice that when you extrude using control E, you'll get this uh, you get this little box here with properties in it and there's this translation amount. That's how much you move this up or down by when you do the extrusion. Okay, so we're just going to move that up to there like that. And then um, this top one here, we might just scale this in a bit. So let's go into our um, R key and again, we're just going to use this little guy here to scale that in. Okay, so little bit more like a wine glass now. Uh, let's leave the top for a moment and go and do the base. So come down here, uh, select your face on the bottom. Remember you need to be in face select mode to select faces. And what we're going to do here is extrude this one. Now here's another trick to extrude. If you're in the move tool, right, you've got your move tool selected, you can hold down your shift key and you'll notice that when you move your mouse over one of these dimensions with your shift key held down, it will give you an extrude option. So when I drag that down, instead of moving it, it extrudes it. Okay, so we'll extrude it down a little bit like that. And then we'll do it again a second time. And this second one, we will then extrude down and make bigger like this. Okay, so you can sort of see how this is working. 
Now, if you're curious, you press your uh, three key on your keyboard and you can see that we're starting to get something that looks a little bit like a wine glass. Okay, maybe it looks a bit like an egg with an, an egg cup with an egg in it at the moment, but we've got the basic shape starting to come out. Okay, so press one again on your keyboard to go back to, um, to go back to flat shaded mode and uh, we'll do some work on the top. Now the next bit we need to do is, you see this top bit here is, um, has got a face on it, which is, um, which, which, is, which is flat and obviously a wine glass is no good if it was like this, it needs to be able to hold wine in it. So if I was to click on that face, you might be tempted to press your delete key and just delete that and now you've got a sort of a hollow wine glass, right? But you can see the stem's hollow and we've also got problems with lighting on the inside and all sorts of other gnarly things are going to happen to you, which we don't want. So we'll undo that. In fact, what we're going to do is instead of doing that, we're going to, we're going to um, do a little extrusion trick. This extrusion trick is really useful whenever you want to inset anything. So we're going to go Control E and that will bring up our extrusion um, options here. And we want to go down to this one here that says um, that says offset, and we want to make this 0 0.1. When you do that, it will extrude, but instead of extruding up or down, it keeps it flat and brings it in. So it's like doing an extrusion and then scaling it in. All right, and this gives us a lip on our wine glass. And now, for the really um, fun part of extrusion, we'll do one more extrusion. So if you like, go back to your um, selection tools, go back to where we are, you can see it's completely flat. Select your inset extrusion face. And what we're gonna do is, don't be tempted to just bring this straight down like this because this will give us a very sharp edge up here. We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is we wanna extrude this face, right? So we're gonna extrude it. But what we're gonna do here is when we extrude it, we're going to Right, we're going to extrude it, but instead of extruding it up like this, we're going to extrude it down. And you can see what this does is it kind of burrows a hole into our wine glass. Now we need to know how far down to take it, because if we take it down too far, it'll stick out the bottom, which we don't want. But if we don't take it down far enough, then it's going to be too thick at the bottom. So what we'd really like to be able to do is see what's going on inside. Best way to do that is to go into wireframe mode. So press four on your keyboard and then just bring that, bring that face down a little bit so you can see where it's at. If you like, you can switch in to side view. Press four on your keyboard and this will let you um, have a look at your wine glass from side. We can bring that down to there. And then we might want to scale this up, right, so that we've got um, so that this this thickness of this wall stays the same all the way through. So let's go uh, uh, to our R key, and we'll just scale this up, and we'll keep those lines more or less parallel. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it again. So W key, and then Shift extrude, and we're going to bring it down to about there. And then we're going to scale this one in. Like this. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that I've only scaled this in one dimension. So if I go back into my 3D view, you might well find that, it's, see how it's like not, not equal all the way around? So what I need to do is I need to go in and fix that. So what I need to do is I need to be able to select the edges that I was working with there. So in order to do that, I want to get out of face select mode and go into edge select mode. This now lets me select the lines or the edges that make up my mesh. If I select this one here, you can see that that one is not the one I want to move out. It's this one here and this one here that I want to move out. And also, actually, probably this one here, and probably also this one here. Okay, because they're in slightly the wrong place. So let's just move those out so we can actually have a look over here at a uh, different angle if we like, or even we could even have a look at it top down. Press our uh, four key to go into um, to go into uh, wireframe mode, and then we can just scale that out. 
until it's all symmetrical. Okay, it looks like we've got two lines here, this one and this one, which is still not symmetrical. So we'll just uh, scale those guys in. Maybe let's have a quick look at what, what's going on here. Yeah, we want to scale those guys in. We want to scale them right into, probably into the middle here like this. And these two here, we probably want to scale these guys in. Whoops, these two here. We want to scale these guys in like this. Okay, so how's that looking? That's looking pretty good, right? Got our wine glass pretty much where we want it. So let's uh, turn it back into shaded mode. So we go uh, 5, 5, 5, and we'll snap back into this view with our space bar, and we can have a look at our object. Okay, let's have a look at it in smooth mode. So press 3 on your keyboard. And you can see that we've got something that looks very much like a wine glass now. Aesthetically, it may not be the most beautiful wine glass in the world, but we can play with that a bit. Let's uh, change the size of its base here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay in edge select mode, but what we want to do is we want to select all the edges on the bottom here like this. And what we're going to do is once we've got all of them selected, we will uh, go into our scale mode, our scale tool, and we'll grab this little green guy here and we'll just make that come out a little bit so it's a little bit wider base on our wine glass. And then what we might want to do is we might want to control the way this curvature is. So you notice how it curves here in nicely there, but then it's sort of, I'd, I'd like this to curve in a bit more here. Now you might sort of figure, well, I could select this series of edge loops around here. This is called an edge loop. See, it's a series of edges which go round in a circle. And you can usually um, select an edge loop just by double clicking on it. So there we go, I've double clicked on that and I can select all the edges that make up that circular bit. So you might look at this and think, well, why wouldn't we just then do exactly what we did down the bottom here and just change the shape of that? We could, but it's kind of changing the overall shape of our wine glass. Like it's changing all of this part of my stem too, which I don't really want. So what I can do here is I can add in another edge loop. The way you do that is with this multi-cut tool. Select the multi-cut tool and you'll see that you can actually just use the multi-cut tool to click on any edge and then create your own new face in there like that. And if I wanted to create that face, I could now click the right mouse button and it would make a new face there. I don't want to do that though, I want to create an edge loop. So when you're doing box modeling, you always want to keep your edge loops in there. So to create an edge loop, move your mouse over one of the edges that you want the loop to cut through, and then hold your control key down and you'll see that you can create an edge loop. So I'm going to create an edge loop in here and you'll see straight away when you do that that the shape of this object changes. Come back over here. Press your Q key to go back into select mode and you can now select that edge loop, press your W key and you can move it up or down as you need to to change the shape of your wine glass. In this case, I'd kind of like my whole wine glass to be a bit shorter, so I'm going to select all those edges up there. In fact, I'm going to select all of those edges plus that bottom edge loop. I'm just going to move the whole lot down a bit. You'll notice here I've grabbed too many edges. I've grabbed these edges as well. So another way of doing this is to go into vertex select mode and that lets me select individual vertices and now I can grab all those vertices and I haven't selected the edges and now I can move those down and get my wine glass more to the height that I want it to be. Let's say I wanted to change the dimensions of my wine glass around here. I could go into edge select mode and just select this um, edge here, this edge loop here, and then I could just use my art key to scale that up to make this into more of a brandy glass or something like that. Problem with doing that though is that if I do that, I haven't selected the edge loop, the matching edge loop inside. That means that I'll basically, if I go into um, wireframe mode, you'll see this a bit easier. If I now modify that, you'll see I'm making that edge loop thicker but I'm not changing the size of the inside of my glass. So if that's the case, I can also select the inside edge loop 
and then I can move both of them out like that. When you've got your glass looking the way you want it to look, you can um, of course add in more edge loops if you wish. You could put in, you know, for example, we could put in another edge loop through here in the glass um, and we could use that edge loop to control the shape even further. So in this case I could um, in this case I could use it to uh, add in, for example, a, another shape here to have a bit more control over how I want this to go. Obviously though, like I said, just like before, the problem is that if I've put an edge loop out here, I haven't put one inside. So because we've got an inside and an outside of this mesh, we've got to remember that anything I do to the outside here, I've got to also do to the inside. So to do that, probably the easiest way is to um, maybe go into a side view, turn on wireframe, use my cut tool, put my edge loop in here, but then also move my mouse really carefully around so I can try and select one of these inner edges and see if I can place another one inside. I might actually have to go back out to a 3D view at this point to actually get inside there to put that edge loop in there. Once I've created that edge loop, it may also be in the wrong place. So I might need to, you can see it's done something funky here. So I might need to go back to my um, wireframe view, or maybe even my side view, and select the one that I created that I didn't like using my edge select tool. And then I might need to come in here and select the edge that is not working properly and fix it up. Looks like it's this edge, maybe. And then bring it back up to where it should be. Doesn't look like it's that edge, maybe it's uh, this one. And there we go, that looks a bit better. And then five to go back into shaded mode. One other thing to note about um, this smooth mode is that um, you can go from block mode back to, back, back to smooth mode. You can toggle between them with the one key and the three key. And the two key will give you a kind of in-between view where you can still see the mesh that's defining the outside, but you can see how it's also going to look. Okay, and that's how to create a wine glass in Maya using box modeling.